Hi there everybody, welcome back to another video here with me, Jennifer Kirk, and it's really good to have you along. And today we're going to be having a look at some of the goodies that have uh, been coming through that I've been picking up. And actually this one in particular, I've been so excited by. I mentioned it in the Hornby uh, 2019 announcements, and this is the thing that I really like about Hornby, that uh, when they announce stuff, quite often some of that stuff comes through really, really quickly. We're not waiting months, if not years, as we do with some of the other manufacturers. And also, this particular model holds some great childhood memories for me, at least the identity of the locomotive. So without further ado, let's take a closer look. <laughs> It's here, it's arrived, Duchess of Montrose, uh, the Princess Coronation class, and uh, not really all that long ago, maybe a couple of weeks announced by Hornby, and I'm looking on the end here, catalogue number R3642, early BR Green, Princess Coronation class, Duchess of Montrose. And those of you who, um, like me, were brought up with Humby Double O as your uh, toy train of childhood. Uh, in my case, I'm not old enough to have been bought it brand new, but I got it second hand. But the Duchess of Montrose, along with Duchess of Athol, were some very favourite locomotives for me. And when I spotted this in the Hornby 2019 announcement, I thought this is genius. This is going to really appeal to that nostalgia. And at some point, I'm going to retrieve my childhood Duchess of Montrose. And just for fun, I'm going to compare the two of them. So look out for that on a future video. I've also, as I've gone DCC, yes, I know, an expensive pastime, I picked up a digital sound decoder for it from the TTS range. These Princess Coronation class TTS chips are back in stock. So I took the opportunity to pick up one of these at the same time. Now, the RRP for these Princess Coronation class locomotives is pretty high. I believe it's about £189, something like that. Uh, these can be had for a little bit of a discount from your local model shop and also some of the big box shifters, but not by a huge amount. And it's quite telling in a way that these do still seem to sell despite the very, very high price. Now, the Princess Coronation class locomotives, uh, they came about in the late 1930s and they were a development of the Princess Royal class. The first five of these Princess Coronation locomotives were built in de-streamlined form. They were never streamlined. And the idea behind that was to give a comparison to the Coronation class, just to see whether the streamlining provided any economic benefits in terms of um, running costs. As it happened, uh, the streamlined versions, the any cost savings from their air smoothing was outweighed by the added cost of being able to make maintained them. They were a bit more difficult. So it was kind of decided that de-streamlining them was the way to go. And uh, it has to be said that the de-streamlined ones had a few differences, uh, particularly at first, a slightly flattened smoke box. Uh, although later in life, the smoke boxes were replaced and they started to look uh, pretty much the same as the others. There was also uh, a case that the de-streamlined ones had a stepped fall plate at the front, whereas uh, the Duchess of Montrose and other classmates that were built originally by the LMS uh, without streamlining have this sort of curved fall plate. Originally they were introduced without the smoke deflectors and with a single chimney, but the smoke deflectors were subsequently added and the double chimney was added to improve the steaming. Um, so this is the form that we're used to seeing them in BR days. The model itself comes with uh, an awful lot of bits and pieces for you to fit yourself should you so choose. 
We've got the brake rigging for both the tender and the locomotive, an assortment of drain cocks that fit to the underside of the cylinders, which you can only fit if these are going to be either in a display cabinet or not undertaking train set style curves, because they do restrict the motion of this front bogey a great deal. We've also got a front coupling in there, some extra steps to go on the front. Again, only fit these if it's not going to be going around tight curves. And you also get an extra set of rear pony truck wheels, and these are with flanges because the rear pony truck is actually fixed. It doesn't move at all. There's, it's a solid piece. And in order to facilitate this model getting around tighter curves than the prototype would have uh, been subjected to, the wheels that are in there are flangeless. So really, if it's going in a display cabinet or you know an end-to-end -end layout, you've got a, an extra uh, set of wheels there just so it can look the part. I'm going to put these to one side and uh, now we're going to just look at the locomotive itself. I'm really, I'm really, really pleased with the Hornby Princess Coronation class. It is something that uh, has been in the Hornby range now for quite some time and it's been retooled several times. And each time, just when you think it can get no better, Hornby come back and give it a bit of a tweaking and I suspect it's more to do with the fact that the tooling gets worn out through an awful lot of use. They're making a lot of these models and these models are selling so it's a good earner for Hornby and I'm so pleased to see this model in this livery. The paperwork that comes with it gives you an indication of where the extra bits can be fitted but also it shows some maintenance points where you can oil it and also quite importantly it shows you how to get inside the tender for DCC fitting this locomotive and we're going to uh, delve into that a little bit later on. I'm going to show you the DCC fitting of this, which is a pretty easy uh, process to do. The TTS chip is designed to specifically fit into this locomotive, and being a brand new locomotive, it is entirely set up, ready and waiting for that TTS chip to just drop straight in. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. The valve gear on this model is very, very fine, and this is something that Hornby showed when they brought out their Class 8, compared to the Backman Class 8, that uh, valve gear was going to be one of their fortes, and they have not disappointed on this model. All metal, including the cross slide there, it runs flawlessly, and I've had this tested out on Bolton Trinity Road, and it runs pretty smoothly, uh, even before I got around to fitting it with a, a DCC chip. So very, very pleased with that. I've been looking online, and it has to be said, there's uh, at least one person I've seen has had uh, some issues with running qualities, but that has not been borne out with my particular model, and indeed most people are saying that this model has performed flawlessly for them. The livery application is in this wonderful sort of a satin green finish. So there is a shine to it, but it's not overly shiny. It's certainly not a gloss finish. And I really like this. The lining as well is nicely done, very crisp, very slender, just like the real one. And I remember on my Hornby 00 model that the, the lining was done with transfers and was a lot chunkier. So it's quite pleasing to see how lining should be applied. The number there, we've got 46232 applied very, very nicely to the cab sides. And above that, it's power classification. And the slightly thicker lining on the cab sides is nicely realised. Moving to the tender, we have a repeat of the slightly thicker lining tracking around the edge. And that is nicely done. And the Cycling Lion logo is particularly pleasing and very crisp. We've seen some fuzziness on certain models uh, over the years, and it's nice to see that this looks pretty sharp to me. Buffers on this model are all fully sprung, front and back. Looking to the underside, uh, we can see that, again, this is an area that Hornby do really, really well. The coupling between the tender and the locomotive is permanently attached with two screws, and that means that there's very little risk of stressing this cable that uh, connects the locomotive to the tender for additional pickups from the tender wheels and also to allow that DCC socket on the inside. And that's really good. If there's anything that has annoyed 
annoyed me with uh, Backman models is that it's very easy to stress this cable and you really don't want that to pull apart because you'll have the devil's own job to put it all back together. Also on the underside, we've got a representation of the water scoop mechanism. That's becoming pretty commonplace now on models, not just from Hornby, but Backman too. And it's nice to see it because you can see this from the side when you look through the model when it's sat on the track. So it is good to see that that is being included. We've also got these uh, injectors here either side that are really nicely done and finished in this sort of uh, coppery colour and it is really nicely finished. I believe they are plastic but they look like metallic parts and that's really what's important. They also allow this space in the middle to be fairly well hidden so that the tender drawbar is not too obvious from the side when the model is on the track. Pickups in the model, as I've already alluded to, it picks up from the six wheels in the tender as well as the six driving wheels on the locomotive. So it was a pretty faultless performer, even over insel frog points, diamond crossings, that sort of thing. So very pleased with its performance. Whereas the rear bogey is fixed, the front bogey does have a pretty good sphere of travel. So um, it... Uh, tracked the model through all the track work that I subjected it to with the greatest of ease so I'm uh, very pleased with that. It didn't show any hints of derailing and uh, it uh, followed through the track work nicely. In terms of the front face of the locomotive, to my eyes, they've captured it exceptionally well. A lot of people thought that the smoke deflectors that were fitted in BR days were somewhat ugly, but I don't agree with that. I think these locomotives have something of a great presence with and without the smoke deflectors. I do have an LMS liveried uh, model of Duchess of Abercorn, I believe it is, without the smoke deflectors, and I believe the locomotive really does look equally at home. Uh, with or without that being fitted. The double chimney on the top is nicely done and when you look down inside it is prototypically this sort of black void. You can't see the, the bottom of the hole. I don't know what's down there but it certainly looks like it could be a smoke box. It probably won't be on the model but you can be convinced into thinking that yes that is real. For the rest of the model, we've got uh, some very, very fine applied handrails. They are nicely done and very, very slender, separately applied metal fittings. We've also got this line down the top of the body, but it does look like that is prototypically the join between the cladding on the locomotive boiler that the prototype would have had. And I suspect that Hornby have made full use of it for the parting of the tool to disguise that. So it's really nicely done. However, looking at this, there is no continuation across the top of the smoke box. So if that has been used to disguise the parting of the mould, it is exceptionally well done. On the top of the cab, we've got these four, I think they're safety valves, and they're really nicely done. It's hard to tell whether they are metal inserts or just painted plastic, but either way, it has been done exceptionally well. Next to that, we've got a separately applied whistle, and again, hard to tell if it's plastic or metal, but it looks equally as good as to whether it's either, so I'm not too unhappy with that. On the cab roof, we've got a sliding hatch, and it does actually slide open, but that's very, very fragile because it has been modelled scale thickness. So I'd be very, very careful with those if I were you. They're probably quite easy to break. So I'm going to close those and leave them closed. If you are misfortunate enough to uh, accidentally break them off, a little dab of glue will hold them back on, but they won't slide anymore. Now, the tender itself, now this is something that attracted my attention. There is a very full coal load that's modelled as this sort of plastic insert and actually looks all right on its own. But once it's removed, look at that. You can see the coal pushing mechanism that these locomotive tenders were fitted with. And isn't that exquisitely detailed? And for something that most people probably would never, ever take this out, that is exquisite. Now, you may feel that having a tender that has this much space taken up with the coal chute is going to put a crimp on fitting that DCC chip. But as you'll see in a moment, 
That is not the case. This is a very well thought out inside to this model and I'm very pleased with it. I've done a DCC fitting and I'm going to talk you through what I had to do. Uh, I took some photographs as I went. First of all, underneath the tender, you've got two screws there to undo and then it levers up and unclips. If you get stuck at any point, there's uh, plenty of information in the separate paperwork that comes with the locomotive. So don't be afraid to take a quick glance at that. Once inside, we have to loosen off these two screws on the board that the blanking plate goes in and this is to expose a further screw underneath that is one of two that holds in the metal weight. Undo these screws and you'll see the recess that the speaker nicely drops into. It's a perfect fit, it's designed for this speaker so to be honest I saw no point in changing this for anything else. I just dropped it straight in, made sure that none of the wires were trapped in any way and then it was a case of getting the counterweight back in into the tender fixed with those two screws and then very carefully line up and screw back down the board that has the DCC socket and the blanking plate. The blanking plate lever that out and then the plug end of the DCC chip carefully align pin one to pin one push it in, don't uh, go too gung-ho because you'll bend the pins, but as soon as it's lined up, you'll know when it is lined up, push it in all the way, make sure that none of the wires get caught underneath the tender body, and then it's a reverse of the process that uh, unclipped it to get it clipped back in, pushed down, and then those screws done back up tight. Easy as that. There really is no issues with this DCC installation. If you fit the TTS chip, then it's a doddle. Anybody can do this if I can do it. Moving quickly on, the inside of the cab is fully detailed and we have got everything that we've come to expect on models all separately picked out on there, even down to the point that the gauges too have uh, the markings on. I mean, that is going above and beyond the call of duty. A nice roomy cab, it's all completely there. And uh, I, I just, I'm blown away with the quality of these models. Finally, we've got a representation of the splashes and uh, all of the equipment that lies on the running plate. And this is really nicely done. On the old Hornby 00 model, this was quite a chunky part of the integral casting. And you know, back in its day, it looked all right. But here we have a wealth of separately applied detail and really that is exquisite. The final point that I want to draw to your attention is the nameplates on this. And these are actually factory applied, what seem to be etched brass nameplates. And they're really nicely done. So there is no need for application of any aftermarket pieces to these. I'm just really pleased with the overall package that has come from Hornby. So to sum up, it might be an expensive model, but for me, this identity and this livery, this is nostalgia through and through. And I think that this is going to sell very, very well for Hornby, as an awful lot of people, myself included, stock up on a model that was probably a childhood favourite from their days with Hornby 00. I'm going to score this. You know, I can't actually find any fault with it. So I think it's well deserving of a 10 out of 10. There is just nothing to fault with this model. This is a superb addition from Hornby from the 2019 range and it came within a couple of weeks of announcement. There is nothing to not like on this model. Well, I hope that's been really informative to you. Don't forget to like this video, share it too, and also subscribe to the channel and you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up and also ring that bell and that'll let you know. But thanks again for watching. It's been really great to have your company through this video. And until next time, take care of yourself. And this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Mark Anthony, Michael Churchwood, Mark McShane, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt and William Wade. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.